Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I will discuss about PID controller with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you the outlines of this video. In this video, I will discuss about basics, output, block diagram, transfer function, physical understanding, significance, pros and cons of PID controller. So let us start this video with first agenda that is basics of PID controller. Here we have been given with standard closed loop control system where input is R of S and output is C of S. Here we have negative feedback where feedback signal is F of S. This adder is generating error signal that is input minus feedback signal. So error signal that is R of S minus F of S. This error signal that is input to controller and controller is generating controlled signal that we give it to system or plant. Here our controller will be PID controller. PID means proportional, integral and derivative controller. Now I will explain output of PID controller. PID controller is a combination of proportional, integral and derivative controller. Here we have PID controller. That is a combination of proportional, integral and derivative controller. Input to PID controller is error signal. With standard closed loop control system, I have explained input to controller is error signal and output is controlled signal. So here output of PID controller that is controlled signal. Here this input that we give it to proportional, integral and derivative controller. So output of proportional controller will be constant Kp into input. Input is E of t. So output will be Kp into E of t. Output of integral controller that will be Ki into integration of input. So that will be Ki into integration of et dt. Output of differential controller that will be constant Kd into differentiation of input signal. So that is KD into DET by DT. These three outputs that we add it over here and that is our in total output that is controlled signal. So total output is given by algebraic sum of this three output. Here we have output in time domain. Usually we analyze system in frequency domain. So to have this output in terms of frequency domain, let us apply Laplace transform. So if you apply Laplace transform, then this m of t that will become m of s, this e of t that will become e of s and integration will be e of s divided by s and differentiation will be e of s into s. Here we can have this output in form of input by taking E of S common. If you take E of S common, then in bracket we have Kp plus Ki by S plus S into Kd. Here transfer function of PID controller that is output divided by input. So if you want transfer function, then transfer function will be M of S divided by E of S output divided by input that is Kp plus Ki by S plus Kd into S. So that is what transfer function of PID controller. Now I will explain physical understanding of PID controller. PID controller is a combination of proportional, integral and derivative controller. In PID controller, our input signal is error signal. So let us consider we have input to the controller that is error signal which is happening like this and this input signal that we give it to proportional integral and derivative controller. So here with proportional controller let us try to understand how output will appear. See output of proportional controller that is simply constant Kp into input E of t. Here E of t that is this input here you can observe the trajectory. If you talk about output of proportional controller, then shape of output will remain same only you will be multiplying constant with input. 
if I say constant Kp is 1.2, then output will be appearing somewhat like this. Here, shape of output that will be similar to shape of input, only we are multiplying constant. Now, let me explain output of integral controller. See, with integral controller, input is error signal, right? So, output will be constant ki into integration of input. You need to understand what is the meaning of integration. See, integration means summing up input signal. So, here we have input signal that we need to summing up. Here, summing up means if you observe input signal over here, then that is positive. So, as if I say my output is starting from 0 and here input is positive, as input is positive, my output will increase. You can observe my output will increase and here rate of increase is fast. Why the reason is my input is having higher value. But over here, you can observe input is having positive value but lower value. That's why rate of increase is slow. Here, if you observe my input is 0. After onwards, we have negative input. As we have negative input, my output will decrease over here. Right. So, that is how output will appear with integral controller. Now, if you talk about derivative controller, then in derivative controller, if you have input signal that is E of t, then output will be constant kd into differentiation of input with respect to time. See, differentiation of input with respect to time means rate of change of input with respect to time means it is a slope of input. Like you can observe here we have slope that is tangent to curve that is horizontal. Horizontal slope means zero. If you calculate slope over here, then that is somewhat like this that is negative slope. Here also slope is negative. Here also slope is negative. Over here, see slope is horizontal. And over here, if you observe slope, then that is positive. Here, if you plot output, then that is purely based on slope of input. So, here slope of input is 0. So, my output is 0. That is kd into det by dt. Here, slope of input is negative. So, you will be observing my output that is getting negative over here. And at this instant, slope is getting 0. So, you will be observing my output that will get 0 over here. And over here, slope is getting positive. So, my output will get positive over here. Right. So, that is how my output will change with respect to slope of input. So, this is all about physical understanding of proportional integral and derivative controller. Now, I will explain significance of PID controller. PID controller is having advantages of proportional integral and derivative controller. PID controller is having no steady state error. That is due to inclusion of integral controller inside PID controller. PID controller can take anticipatory actions. That is due to derivative controller. Using derivative controller, we can predict input because of which we can take anticipatory action. Using PID controller, we can have reduced overshoot and oscillations. That is due to derivative controller. With PID controller, we can have lower settling time and higher stability margin. That is possible due to proportional and derivative controller. One should know with derivative controller, we add zeros in the system because of which we have higher stability margin. Using PID controller, we will be having faster transient response and that is possible due to proportional and derivative controller. If you have higher proportionality constant Kp with proportional controller, then we can have faster transient response. With PID controller, we have improved stability that is due to derivative controller as using derivative controller, we add zeros in the system. Now, I will explain 
block diagram and transfer function of PID controller with standard second order system. Here we have PID controller with standard second order system. You can observe this is controller block that is PID controller block. Gain of PID controller that is KP plus KI by S plus S into KD that I have already explained in this video itself. Gain of PID controller that is KP plus KI by S plus S into KD. Here we have standard second order system that is omega n square divided by S into S plus 2 zeta omega n where omega n is natural resonance frequency and zeta is damping constant. Here we have unity negative feedback and we need to identify transfer function that is a ratio of output C of S divided by input R of S. For negative feedback transfer function is GS divided by 1 plus GS HS. So transfer function of negative feedback that is GS divided by 1 plus GS HS. Here HS that is feedback. We have unity feedback over here. So HS is equals to 1. And if you talk about G of S, then G of S that is a multiplication of these two blocks as these two blocks are there in series. So here we have these two blocks that is in series. So G of S that is multiplication of these two gain. Now I will simplify this multiplication. So I will take S as LCM over here. So this S that is getting multiplied over here. So that will be KD into S square and here it will be S into KP and in denominator now we will be having S square into this. So after simplifying this we will be having G of S that is this. Now let us substitute G of S and H of S in this equation. After substitution here we need to simplify this equation where I will multiply this S square into S plus 2 zeta omega n with 1 so that we can have cancellation of this term from numerator and denominator. So let us do that. Now here if you observe I have multiplied this term with 1 over here and I have cancelled this too. Now I need to simplify this denominator equation. Here in denominator highest order is S square into S that is S cube. Then we have S square term where with S square we have 2 zeta omega n and here with S square we have omega n square into KD and with S term we have omega n square into KP and constant is omega n square into KI. So that is how we can identify transfer function right. Now let me explain advantages of PID controller. When you talk about advantages of PID controller, then that is having advantages of proportional, integral and derivative controller. See with proportional controller, we have lower rise time and faster response at high value of KP. So that advantage that is included with PID controller as with PID, we have proportional controller. Due to integral controller, we can eliminate steady state error. And due to derivative controller, we will be having improved stability. Why the reason is with derivative controller, we add zeros with the system because of which we have improved stability. We have lower overshoot and lower settling time. And with PID controller, we have advancement in adaptability. There are some issues with PID controller like there is a tuning complexity and system complexity. So this is all about PID controller. I hope you have enjoyed this session. Still, if any confusion is there, just place that in comment section. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.